Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial. In this tutorial we will add some viscosity to our fluid simulation. So let's get started. In the last episode we added our double density relaxation. Um, yeah, and we got a full moving fluid simulation already. And in this episode we are adding now the viscosity to it. So uh, let's see how we can do that. Let's jump to Visual Studio and implement our viscosity. And for this, I'm going to create a new method, and this will be called um, viscosity. And the viscosity will have a delta time, and I'm going to call this right in between the apply gravity and uh, predict positions with the delta time. And in here, in the velocity, uh, in the viscosity, I can copy actually um, some things because, of course, we need to iterate through every particle again. So let's copy this one from the double density. Then we need to get the neighbors too. So I can copy this one too. And then we have um, this for loop again. Um, where we iterate through all of the neighbors except our own neighbor, or well, except our own particle. Then we need to create a direction vector to our uh, neighboring particle. And actually, I think we can just use this one. All right. And now. I need to retrieve the velocities, so I'm going to say velocity a is equal to veloc uh, particle a dot velocity, and then we have the velocity b from the particle b dot velocity. All right, then I'm going to check if the q value, so I need to I'm just going to copy this one too. Um, if the Q value here is smaller than one, so that means it is in our um, neighbor code, basically. <laughs> and uh, yeah, now I'm going to just I'm gonna make a space here. Um, now I can say the direction vector i want to normalize this one and then i'm going to calculate the uh, it's I think it's called radial inward velocity um quite complex um this just means that this velocity well it this formula to yeah you get the um the relative velocity which are you know, the particles are moving um, towards the uh, neighbor particles, for example, and you get the value out of that. Um, you might see that, you might have seen that already when we did the Richard body simulation. Um, um, there, uh, we needed to calculate the relative velocity. And this is the relative velocity here, but uh, we're going to take the dot product, not the door product, the dot product from um, the direction, from the normalized direction vector of those particles. And yeah, then we have the so-called uh, inward radial velocity. And with this one, we will calculate a impulse to smooth out the velocities of our neighbors and of our own so we get a more big or more honeyer movement first um, we all we only want to apply this one if uh, this value is uh, actually greater than zero because if it's zero, then we don't have and we don't have a effect on it. And yeah, then we can calculate our impulse term. 
and I'm gonna call this one just I, um, cause this is the exact, um, representation in the paper or in the algorithm. So I'm just sending it to this one. And here I can say delta time times one minus Q times, now we have some constants. Um, not quite sure how to pronounce this one. Um, I actually need to Google that. Uh, how this is written one second all right uh this letter is called sigma and we have to multiply this with um the with uh the the, the rt value we calculated and then we add this one with the beta sign maybe i can just copy this one Oops. Come on, I just want to have this sign here, this character. There we go. Yeah, and this will be with the power of two. And uh, this is our um, term, and I'm going to call this now y term. Because we need to uh, multiply this one with the direction vector, with the normalized direction vector right there. And then we get our y, and this is just the scale of our direction vector times y term. All right. And then we can apply our, our velocity change First, I'm going to do this to particle A dot velocity. And here we need to subtract this value. So I'm just going to copy this one again and say, um, yeah, also we need to split this one by half. So that means just this one times 0 0.5 and the other half we're going to apply to the other particle, but not by subtracting, instead we do by uh, adding, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Um, now, of course, we need to specify these values, and I think I'm just going to say, instead of using this character, um, I'm going to say... Uh, this dot sigma and this dot beta. Okay, and I'm gonna set these values. Um, um, yeah, I'm gonna set these um, under the interaction radius discus parameters and this is this that is sigma it's just setting it now to zero and this dot beta this one also to zero all right and i think that's everything um i'm gonna check if i made an error and i'll be back in a second and the first error I made, of course, um, a copy and paste error. This here, this line, this particle needs to be particle B. And if you go to our browser, note that still our parameters are set to zero. If we go now to our browser, save and refresh, then you will see that our simulation is still fine. But of course, it's because there is no viscosity applied there because um, this term here is zero because this one is zero. That means this one is zero. Beta is also zero. So this whole term here is zero, which means this thing here is zero, which also means that the impulse is zero. So no change.
All right. Uh, I think we should change some. Uh, we should uh, change the zeros now to see something. And I think um, because um, this might be a little bit tedious to find out which values work, so I'm gonna check and um, which values will uh, get some cool results. And I'll be back in a second again. All right. So I changed the beta value um, from zero to zero point two. I want to uh, show you what's happening when we change this one, or when we change this value. So in our browser, this is now the example when we have a beta value of uh, zero, just zero, nothing else. And when I change this slightly to a higher value than the viscosity, um, well, the flow will increase. So this will add velocity to the fluid simulation. And if we do that a little bit too high, then um, the simulation will be unstable, as you can see. And uh, yeah, this is now with a value of 0 0.025. Yeah, we can we can uh, really much increase this value. All right, and uh, what happens when we increase the sigma value so if you increase the sigma value um this will uh be well this will change the viscosity to get a more uh, well viscous fluid and um for less viscous fluid you should only set the beta value to a non-zero value if you want a highly viscous fluid, you should set the sigma value to a higher value. So I set that now to 0 0.1, as you can see right there. And now let's see what's happening. Okay, nothing really much to see here. Uh, I'm just going to change this one now to 0 0.5. And I think also I'm going to remove the beta value. This is now sigma with 0 0.5. Yeah, I think we can increase it a little bit further with 1 now. Yeah, maybe you can already see a little bit of a change. I think it's a little bit too much. Change this to 0 0.9. Maybe I should change the velocity damping. Okay, that's a way better uh, outcome now. Okay, so my values for this viscous fluid is a sigma of 0 0.7 and a velocity damping of 0 0.99. And uh, yeah, that's it for this episode. And in the next one, uh, I'm going to show you how we can implement some particle emitters so we can spawn some particles in a cooler way than just um, yeah spawning a whole quad and... Uh, yeah, that's going to be a little bit more interesting, I guess. All right, then I uh, hope to see you in the next one. And I wish you a nice day and see you then. Bye bye.